In my most recent video, I measured the size of the Earth with my bicycle and two sticks. And to do that, I ended up confirming that indeed the Earth is a sphere. Now, as a scientist, I had to make assumptions. Specifically, I had to make one assumption, which is that the Earth and the Sun are very far apart from one another. Now, <laughs> this got a lot of criticism from the Flat Earth community, uh, and a lot of comments saying that it's bad science to make assumptions. But you have to make assumptions in science. To make no assumptions is to make the assumption that you haven't forgotten anything, that you haven't missed an assumption that you are making. You have to. But in good science, the best you can do is to state your assumptions as clearly as possible and to make sure that they're based off of good evidence. Now, if the Earth is flat, the Sun needs to be very close for that model to work. It needs to be less than 5,000 kilometers from us, which means that it should be very easy to test. If the Sun is extremely close to us, as it is suggested to be in the flat Earth model, then when it's noon, when it's right above us, it should be a lot bigger than when it is setting, when it's further away because objects appear smaller when they're further away. So I've been trying to use my telescope for this, and I honestly don't know how Greg managed to get the sun and myself lined up in another video. I'm just gonna use my SLR camera with the solar filter on it. If the flat earth model is correct, then the sun should be about half the size that it was when I was here earlier today. What's cool about this experiment, I think, is that all you need is a $15 solar filter. I mean, you could even just do this with a cardboard box and make a pinhole camera. I've, there's instructions about how to do that. You can do amazing experiments with very little other than some time and some thought. Um, let's give this a try. Now that I've got both of the photos, I can compare the sizes of the sun in each of them. So this is the photo from solar noon, and this is the photo from near sunset. As you can tell by the color in this one, uh, the light from it was traveling through a lot of the Earth's atmosphere. So it changes, changes the color, that's why sunsets look pretty and it also distorted it a little bit so it doesn't look like a perfect circle and it's a little squished. But if you compare the sizes by looking at the number of pixels in both of the photos, they're within 5% of the same size of one another. They're pretty much the same size. I think this is very compelling evidence that the sun is indeed very far away, but more than that, I hope that this little project is a single example of how if we want to learn about the universe we live in, we can't just do thought experiments. We need to go out and use and trust the process that is the scientific method. Over the last few months, I've also been spending some time building this thing. It is a digital flute that is going to make sound via lightning and I'm going to use it to teach how the language of computers works in my next video. We're now four months into the experiment that is Sir Stabbington, and he has been doing very well. In the last month he had over 500 new subscribers, which is 500 drops of water in his bucket. And finally, after all of this time, I finally have a permanent live stream of him on my new website, curtisbowdy.com. So you can go and check him out, and you can actually also see him talk because I added a feature. I've spent way too long on this cactus. Um, but yeah, no, he like thanks people and he complains that, uh, you know, I'm torturing him and it's great. Uh, check it out, uh, link in the description. And as always, thanks so much for watching.